I have no love for Christian missionaries. I think what they do is a worse than useless vestige of colonialism that sucks up valuable resources and tarnishes the name of charity. That being said, I don't want them to die, which, if you think about it, puts me way ahead of the people who operate Christian missions. You may have heard about the latest tragic result of this bullshit already. A young American couple were among the three missionaries shot and killed in Haiti last week. And the details of this one are pretty fucked up. They were ambushed by three trucks as they were leaving their church. They took them to their house where they beat the shit out of the husband. They start loading up all the shit they can carry in their trucks. Then a second gang shows up to get in on the action. A gunfight breaks out between them. The three missionaries hold up at the house at the rear of the property and desperately try to get help with their satellite phone, but to no avail. All three were shot and killed. Davy and Natalie Lloyd, ages 23 and 21, and the Haitian director of their nonprofit, Jude Montes. All of them gave their lives in a futile effort to bring the word of Christ to a country that is 94% Christian. Yo, this tragedy could not have been more avoidable. Haiti is one of the most dangerous places in the world right now. The State Department issued a whatever-you-do-don't-go-here warning about Haiti back in July of 2023, and a get-the-fuck-out-of-there-if-you-are-there warning not long after that. These warnings start with the words, quote, Do not travel to Haiti due to kidnapping, crime, civil unrest, and poor health care infrastructure, end quote. It goes on to describe almost exactly the situation Davy and Natalie found themselves in. In the summary, it warns that, quote, violent crime, often involving the use of firearms, such as armed robbery, carjacking, and kidnappings for ransom that include U.S. citizens, are common, end quote. But they ignored the warnings. Even as things got worse and worse around them, they ignored entreaties from their government and from their family to come home. Unlike the people in Haiti, or most of the people in Haiti anyway, they had a safe option. But apparently, convinced that God was looking over them and that their work was too important to even pause, they ignored all the red flags, and then the inevitable happened. We learned about it from a panicked Facebook post from Missions in Haiti, Inc., that reads in part, quote, The gangs has shot out all the windows out of the house and continue to shoot. Their lives are in danger. I have been trying all my contacts to get a police armored car there to evacuate them out to safety, but can't get anyone to do Please pray, going to be a long night, end quote. I was followed about three hours later from a second post that read in its entirety, quote, Davy and Natalie and Jude were shot and killed by the gang around nine o'clock this evening. We are all devastated, end quote. And I include those posts, not for shock value, by the way, but as a reminder that when people do this, it's never just themselves that they're endangering. They tried to get more people to come into an active firefight to rescue them. And as for Jude, the, the Haitian director that never had the option to escape to the U.S., it's worth mentioning here that the State Department Travel Advisory specifically mentions that Americans are being regularly targeted for kidnapping. So even just their presence was no doubt putting everyone they traveled with in danger. And I'm not saying that to vilify them, right? They're, they're the victims here in more ways than one. I'm just saying that the blame doesn't just lie with the people who pulled the trigger. It also lies with everybody who put them in the firing line, the whole fucking culture that told them that they were doing something that was so goddamn vital it was worth dying for. I'm reminded of that asshat John Allen Chow who tried to teach that uncontacted tribe off the coast of India about Jesus and got shot to death by an arrow. Now, in this instance, he was risking exposing them to diseases that could wipe them out and breaking a whole host of laws and shit, so I'm fine vilifying that guy. But like the Lloyds, he was a victim of the culture that lionized missionary work far more than the people who physically killed him. He was told that these people were all going to burn in hell for eternity after they died. If that's true, the math works out. Right. It's, it's worth risking an unintentional biological genocide if you have a realistic chance of preventing eternal damnation for a huge group of people. And obviously things are different in this instance. Right. Davey grew up in Haiti. He loved the country. He wanted to give back to it. That's commendable. I'm sure both of them were doing all this shit for the right reason, and they made it clear that this was something they were willing to risk their lives to do. And that's commendable, too. The shame isn't so much that they died as that they died for so little. It's that they had been taught that people's souls were a thing and that those were a thing worth risking your life for, that God was a thing and that he would protect them, that heaven was a thing and that giving your life for the gospel was a fast track to paradise. If they'd known the truth, if they had been older and wiser, or if the older and wiser people around them didn't foster such a naive worldview in them, who the hell knows what decisions they might have made? 
But instead, they were raised in a culture that told them that what they were doing wasn't just important, it was heroic. This was a culture that elevated dumbasses like Chow and will no doubt do the same with Davy and Natalie. And in so doing, they will condemn the next Davy and Natalie to the same fate.